pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, good morning and welcome to the February 5th uh, County Commission meeting and before we start uh, I'd like to remind everybody to silence their uh, cell phones and there's meeting documents next to uh, Commissioner Barth over by the uh, he's holding that up and as soon as our new judge comes back <laughs> from getting coffee this might be the one of the last times or the last time that we'll get to see his smiling face around here because as most of us are aware he was appointed judge in Mitchell and he's been a long-term supporter of the County Commission and his legal advice and frankly I've learned more from him in a couple hours than I do when I have to pay for one <laughs> So I would like to congratulate you. Uh, frankly, you've just been an incredible uh, support and advocate for the commission and the county, and it's a great promotion for you, and we're going to miss you, but thank you for being here this morning, and we hope and wish you well, and Godspeed. Thank you very much. We wish it. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started with routine business. Item one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the routine. Or the, the, I'm going to start this with foot and mouth disease again this morning. <laughs> with uh, approving the agenda for this morning. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion's unanimously passed. Item two is to approve the County Commission minutes of January 29th, 2013. I'll move. Yeah, I'll move the minutes. Second. Well, wait a second, Dick. You having? Is your system working? Is your system working? No. I can hear. Okay. Most of it. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the County Commission minutes of January 29th. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Item three, our bills to be paid in the amount of $543,410.50. Pay the bills. Second. Any questions? We have a motion and a second to pay the bills. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion again unanimously passes. Item five is personnel. Item A is to approve the routine action. I'll move routine action. Second. Good morning. I was going to ask you what happened to item four, but. <laughs> I'll have to check on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. It must be a secret. <laughs> Obviously, we didn't have any. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll blame it on the uh, new judge. <laughs> uh, we have a motion and a second to approve the routine action. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. Opposed. Motion passes unanimously. Item B is to recognize significant employee anniversaries for February 2013. Good morning. Good morning. Maggie Gary from Human Resources. Um, we have some significant anniversaries for February. Um, first, Jeff Lee Lemaire from the Juvenile Detention Center, he's a juvenile caseworker, is celebrating 35 years of service. We have Patricia Krupa, who's a veteran service officer for Human Services, celebrating 30 years of service, and she is with us today. We have four jail staff members who are celebrating 10 years of service. We have um, Sid Dunn and also Derek Lauer, who are correctional officers, Mike McGovern, who is a sergeant, and also Jackie Noboom, who is a correction system operator, and she is with us as well today. Awesome. And then we have Corey Peckus, who is a highway maintenance worker for the highway. He is celebrating no, five years of service. We would just have the employees with the anniversary stand. We'd like to recognize you for your unbelievable service. Thank you very much. Item C is to recognize volunteers and county government for January 2013. 
Um, in January, we had 230 volunteers in six different departments throughout the county. These volunteers make a significant impact to our operations, and we're thankful for their assistance. And item D is to consider a motion to approve a new classification of corporal at pay grade 16. Um, as you know from the briefing memo regarding the Deputies Association contract addendum on today's agenda, the jail is interested in creating a position of corporal. We've had the position description questionnaire reviewed by Condry and Associates. If you approve this action, we'll formally create the new position and classify it in pay grade 13, or excuse me, 16. Thank you. We were uh, briefed on this last week. I think uh, we all understand uh, the reasons for doing it. It makes good economic sense. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments? I'll make the motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Kelly. Those in favor of the action, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. The next item is application for abatement. Kyle Helsa, and he's not here. Pam Nelson, they are. Um, the two abatements that we have on the agenda today are for the elderly freeze, but elderly and disabled freeze, and ID number 23175, assessment freeze taxes, the amount of the abatement would be $1,077.11. And um, ID number 78777 uh, for the elderly freeze, um, the amount would be $218.73. Motion to approve the abatements. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval. Those, anybody have any questions about those? If not, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. <clears throat> Item 7, our notices and requests. Notice from American Lung Association in South Dakota of intent to conduct a fundraising raffle on Thursday, March 21st, 2013 at Valentino's Restaurant, Sioux Falls. Is there anyone here this morning from the uh, American Lung Association? No? Okay. I'll make the motion to authorize the auditor. We have a motion. We, we don't, need don't a motion think anymore. we need one on this no. one, John. I'm it says first reading and authorized county no, auditor. We're on seven. We're on oh, seven. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, item number eight are planning and zoning notices. Pat Herman. Good morning, Good morning, Pat. Pat Herman for Minnehaha County Planning. Um, the first item before you is an amendment to Article 19, which is the conditional use permit part of the county ordinance. Right now, the ordinance only allows the Planning Commission to revoke a, con a conditional use permit. They're not, not allowed to review it and set new conditions or change conditions. What this amendment would do would, would give the Planning Commission the ability to do that, to amend, revise, add, or delete conditions. That gives them a little more leeway in, in working with the property owner on coming to a resolution with somebody that's not meeting the conditions of their current conditional use permit. Um, it comes to you with a unanimous recommendation from the Planning Commission. And so today this is uh, the first reading and authorizing the auditor to publish notice of a public hearing at 9.15 on February 19th to consider this amendment to the County Zoning Ordinance. Thank you, Pat. Does anybody have any questions for Pat? Again, this is a first reading, so we won't be taking any action other than publishing the notice. Questions? No questions? Uh, motion to uh, move to have accept the authorization to authorize the auditor to publish notice. Second. October 19th. Okay, we have a motion and a second to publish the notice of hearing. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <coughs> motion unanimously passes. Item B. Uh, the next item is an amendment to the zoning ordinance again. This would be for Article 12.03, Home Occupations, and Article 27, Land Use Codes. Uh, the Planning Commission directed staff to review the Home Occupations regulations looking at uh, building size and the type of uses that are allowed. This amendment would allow a larger size building based on the size of the property the home occupation is occurring on. It would also better define what a home occupation is, what would be allowed and what isn't, making it easier for the public and for the Planning Commission to know what can and cannot be done as a home occupation. 
And it also adds a new article, Article 27, which is land use codes, and those are referenced in the home occupation part, so we need to put that in the ordinance. Again, this is a first reading uh, for a public hearing at 915 on February 19th in this room, and this is to revise Article 12.03 and Article 27.0, and so we need authorization for the auditor to publish notice. Any questions for Pat? If not, we would need a motion to publish the uh, notice of hearing for February 19th. Motion to publish notice. Second. So, motion and a second to uh, publish the notice. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. There are no con petition for compromise of lien today. The next item is opportunity for public comment. If anybody has any uh, public comments that they'd like to make on any item that is not on the agenda, uh, we would welcome that now. If not, we'll move on to, i got 12 minutes after. We'll go to probably number 11, I guess. Okay. The next item, then, will be a briefing on the National Institute of Corrections Technical Assistance Report for Minnehaha County Jail and Justice System Assessment. Sheriff Mike Milstead. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Commissioners. As you know, in uh, December, we had the National Institute of Corrections uh, technical assistance uh, consultants come out and uh, review our corrections and justice system. In particular, they, uh, they focused on the Community Correction Center on West Russell, the Old Elks Club that served this county well for the last 20 years as a work release facility. Uh, however, uh, as I've indicated, it's uh, kind of aging in dog years. It's um, when, you, when you read the report, and just for, for your information, we'll, uh, I've forwarded you copies of this report, and we will also post this report on the Sheriff's Office web, uh, website so that the public can view this report online. Um, there was nothing earth-shattering to us uh, as a result of the report. Some of the information, much of the information was, was what, what we felt we were seeing, but we wanted to have people in the business, that uh, experts in this field uh, under the Department of Justice leadership come in and review this and give us uh, some uh, a roadmap of what the next steps we should take. Um, we, we know that we've been dealing with a, a growing inmate population in particular a growing inmate population of local Minneapolis County beds. And that, that's a challenge for us. Uh, our jail remains full uh, most of the time. We do some overflow out into the Community Correction Center. And as the consultants identified, uh, that is a facility that's very hard to supervise inmates, even minimum security inmates like we house out there. Our hands are somewhat tied uh, because we're under a conditional use permit. So we're restricted on who we can uh, house at that location. It is minimum security. Most of the people in the facility are able to come and go. Uh, they go to work or they uh, uh, you know, go out and, and do community service or serve as trustees. So most of them are very low risk, but we do house some jail overflow. And uh, I believe that the housing units out there are too, too large to supervise. One of them has 124 beds, another one has 83 beds and uh, in fact one of the if you want to get to one of the housing units you go through the boiler room and so they've identified that they're you know it, it, it probably not uh, going to be a good or, or a good option to continue to utilize that as a correctional facility long term and we're doing this early in the process so that we can identify what does the county want to do um, and one of the things that they said is not only look at relocating the community correction center but also evaluate uh, with the needs assessment the, the upper floor of the current uh, public safety building or the old jail uh, since the county was going to gut it anyway and make it into an open bay area that that would also serve as a possibility to relieve some of the jail pressure by putting uh, maybe a dormitory setting up there and also some infirmary beds so long range uh, I, I think they're saying hang on to that space, um, maybe prepare that space for uh, the future because it, it may serve us to avoid having to go up two floors in our jail. I'm going to tell you that going up two floors in our jail, even though it was built and designed in a way that we can go up two floors, 
that is very expensive process, very expensive real estate uh, uh, to, to accomplish, and it's very disruptive on the operation of the current jail if that if that occurs. So, I would like to avoid having to add additional floors to the jail, and I think that we can accomplish our goals long range over the next five, ten years at least to uh, to meet the needs by uh, relocation of the community correction center. What happens to be sitting on four acres on a golf course across the street from the new event center, and as you know, the value of that land has gone up significantly. Um, I think we can address it with that and maybe some of the current unused uh, space on the public safety building. Next step, uh, their recommendation, again, uh, we need to do a bed space needs. Uh, that's part of the needs assessment. Uh, we'll develop a classification plan so that we know that if we build a new, another location for our community corrections program, we know what type of inmates will be able to house out there. And then uh, alternatives. So, this, so the, the biggest recommendation is that we uh, start working to identify members of a criminal justice planning commission, commission or committee. Uh, Commissioner Beninga and I have talked, and as the chair and also my liaison, uh, we will work together to identify <coughs> people on that committee. Uh, we'd like to have a small uh, uh, primary committee, and we'll bring other people in. Uh, there, there may be times where we need to involve Lincoln County Sheriff, the U.S. Marshals, uh, city police, the courts, uh, as we develop a plan. But we want to have a smaller working group to. Uh, to start identifying those and then bring in the many people that utilize our facility uh, other than those that are contained with them. And so, uh, Commissioner, I'll work closely with, with Commissioner Beniga and, and uh, we're going to look, uh, keep looking at options for, for locations, potential locations. Uh, there have been some discussions with the city and the state both about potential locations. I see value, and others do too, in having that location near the prison area just because uh, the, the neighborhood up there is used to having a prison or a jail in their backyard and quite frankly uh, they've been good neighbors to the Department of Corrections and uh, for us our highest risk of <coughs> that type of a facility would be uh, probably lower risk than their lowest risk offenders so you know we'll, we'll be moving a low risk facility into some area uh, we need it you know close to a bus route we need you know, uh, some of these, a lot of the inmates that we have in that community corrections ride bicycles, so close to the center of the city, is, there's a benefit there. So I'll work with you, and, and uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, everything, I think we'll make our meetings, I would assume there'll be an open, uh, an open and public meeting. Uh, I think that the reason we have the current jail that we, that we do uh, was, that, was that in great part because the process was very open, very public, and the community was directly involved and aware of the process we were going through. And, and by the time it got to the point that we needed to build a facility, they stood behind us and, and allowed us to do that. And I think we need to do it that way again, and, I, and the commissioner does too. And So we're ready to start moving forward, and, and we'll keep you informed. I, I assume we'll come in and update you when we're having meetings. We'll post the meetings so that uh, if the public or the media wanted to attend and see what we're working on, we'll welcome them. Thank you, Sheriff. Do any of the commissioners have any uh, comments or questions for the Sheriff? Uh, Commissioner Barth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Sheriff, I appreciate your uh, forethought in all of this. You know, out on the street and in coffee shops and on the blogs, people are always saying, you know, how come that guy isn't locked up forever or whatever on whatever issue it is, whether it's a fourth DWI or whatever. But during our budget stuff, not a single person showed up and asked to suspend $20 million more for a jail. I've suggested to people I meet at coffee shops and stuff who say these kinds of things, well, come on down and, and tell us that you want us to, you know, raise taxes and build a, a warehouse for another thousand people. And they've never showed up. And uh, I, I, I clearly, the, the governor's uh, CGI, CJI plan and, and yours are kind of dovetailing together, and I really look forward to uh, building a, the correct facility for our county. Thank you. Any other comments, uh, Commissioner Kelly? Mike, could you talk briefly on the loss of paid, and the revenue losses we've seen in the last few years, and sure. how this thing could help them too? Well, one of one of the relief valves that we have 
uh, is a possibility of, of not housing other people's prisoners. We house all of Lincoln County's prisoners. We have partnerships with 14 other jurisdictions. We partner with the U.S. Marshal Service. The, in America, the Marshal Service, uh, they, the federal government doesn't run jails, they run prisons. So the marshals rely on uh, county jails across the country to, to hold their uh, prisoners until there's a court, and if they're found guilty, then they go to federal prison. As such, uh, we've had up to 90 uh, marshals prisoners in our custody, and, and one of the advantages for this county has been over the, over the eight years that we've been in the facility is they pay, you know, $80 a day, which helps us offset our revenue, or excuse me, helps us offset our, our costs. Uh, it helps us with debt service. And uh, between the marshal service, the Bureau of Prisons, uh, DOC, and, and uh, our partner counties, uh, our county took in $1.8 million last year in revenue, and and it's lower. Uh, this, you know, we anticipate it'll be lower because we're filling up with co local county beds. But that makes for inefficient federal government if we don't have beds available for the federal uh, agents. I'll tell you, the U.S. Marshals spend a lot of windshield time transporting prisoners out of our jurisdiction uh, when they need to come back to court and in federal court in Sioux Falls anyway. So. For us, I mean, as an overall taxpayer, I would view it uh, inefficient if we don't have some beds for them. And so if we keep climbing with our local numbers, uh, we're going to have to keep, we're going to have to call the marshal service or call our neighboring counties and say, we don't have room. And quite frankly, we serve as a regional facility, a regional jail. It's worked out well, and I hope we're able to. And I think if we move forward with community corrections, and work on some other alternatives to incarceration, which is part of the, what you and I and the committee will work on, uh, other ways to keep people out of jail and keep them productive and paying their taxes and supporting their families. Um, if, if we're able to do that, we may be able to house not only as many uh, marshals prisoners and other county prisoners, but we may be able to long-term house them even more. And, and that's a good way to help pay for what we're what we you know, sometimes have to build or our expenses. Uh, certainly. In 12, didn't we amend the revenue estimate about $600,000? And I don't know what 13 was uh, right. down to, I guess, wasn't it? Yeah, we're, you know, we've had to adjust our revenues down, but a, a classic example is, like I said, we're, we've been up to as high as 95 marshals prisoners, and I think yesterday we were at 36. And so that's that's quite a hit. If you figure, you know, do the math. If you if you, if, you, if we're down 40 marshals prisoners at $80 a day, that's that's a considerable sum of money that the county's been utilizing to help offset some of our expenses and pay our debt service. So I, have, I do have the warden, Warden Young here, and Chief Deputy Boyd in case anybody has any questions for them. Any uh, comments from either one of you this morning? Darren Young, United County Jail Warden. Just a couple quick comments. One, I, I think uh, uh, on the report, the NIC consultants came in and they were very impressed with our community here. They were very impressed with our stakeholders meeting with everybody and the desire for everybody to come to some, um, some goals and reach them together and work together. They, they find that rare. Secondly, I would like to say that they also provide us with some options, and as uh, the sheriff said, some, a roadmap maybe to some things we should consider. And, and some of those things we had maybe um, had in our own mind, but they can provide us resources to other places that have implemented these programs so that we can try to take the best way to and best approach to implement those programs. And lastly, as, as the warden kind of, or the sheriff kind of touched on the, the count, you know, I've been here for 18 months now, and, and the inmates have gone up, our count got up 100 inmates and that's without um, you know with any effect on the uh, governor's uh, the plan and program which could affect us and we don't really know exactly how that'll affect us but it will affect us and I think we all know which way it probably will go so we need to be proactive in, in our in our plan here and so coming up any questions for me thank you warden uh, any questions for the warden Michelle, would you like to make comments? Okay, thank you. 
Any uh, questions, comments from the uh, audience? I know there's a few people uh, that will be interested in reading that report and then going into the next step for the, quote, needs assessment of that process and forming a committee to come up with some conclusions and some directions, which will probably also involve some work groups to get information to that group so we can move ahead at some point. Um, obviously, this is a 40 or 50 year commitment and we want to do it right and we will do it right so we'll take our time to make sure it's done with some assessment. John? Thank you Mr. Chair and along that line when we when I read the report it was very interesting that one of the submissions was the letter I believe from at the time Steve Metley to the County Commission regarding the uh, vote regarding the zoning requirement at our County Correction Center where Obviously, nobody with any violent or any sort of uh, 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 sex crime could be located at our uh, county correction center. And I just want to caution our partner uh, in City Hall uh, with this. You know, we're working with the state right now. We're going to be having to uh, work with Senate Bill 70 and trying to accommodate uh, an increase in the number of uh, potential uh, inmates that we're going to have at our facility. And I think when we're looking at a county correction center, one of the linchpins is going to be uh, that I believe that our judges and I believe that our sheriff are best at classification of the particular individuals that should be in that county correction center uh, for work release. I don't think that it's uh, a city councilor's job to decide who can be at that county correction center. Uh, I can tell you that it has hamstrung our jail over the last 21 years uh, to have individuals that had some violent behavior in the past but because they have a DUI now, they can't go to the county correction center. And that means they fill a bed at our jail downtown. And that is not the best use of that particular facility. So once again, I'm just going to say let the professionals make that decision. And uh, I hope that uh, City Hall is listening. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> Excuse me. Any other comments, questions? Uh, if there are people who are interested in uh, being part of a work group or a part of the committee, if you would let me know personally, I would like to hear from you. I think it's important that we uh, have that information uh, soon and that uh, if you can't get a hold of me, you can also get a hold of uh, Mr. McFarland and uh, he'll get that information to us, but we'll move forward with that in a very short period of time. Ken, any comments? Just one, it's something that the sheriff mentioned this morning, just a reminder for any member of the audience, the report will be posted on our website very, I think, yet today. So it'll be available for inspection. Thank you, Ken. Transparency. I was going to make some comment about that report on the website, but I think I'll keep my tongue in my mouth for a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't believe we need to take any action. If we could go back to the um, public hearing. Okay, item 10 is a public progress hearing on Minnehaha County Workforce Training Project to expand Southeast Technical Institute's commercial driver's license training program in the amount of $120,000. Janice Grabney. I'm Janice with CCOG. I've been here before, um, generally in regards to applying for CDBG funds. And actually twice in the last year, the county has applied for funds on behalf of Southeast Tech. What we have today is a public progress hearing for the first grant, which was to expand their commercial driver's license training program. Um, I have a sign-in sheet. I sent it around the audience. I need to send it around here. Have permission, permission to sign it. Thank you. The original amount of the grant was $120,000. Um, it was to be used for buying another semi-tractor. They only have one. It is used here and also goes to remote locations for training, so they're really kind of short on what they need to train the drivers. They have their new, um, new semi-tractor now. They had uh, allowed funds for 20 scholarships. They've had 15 so far, so they're really making good progress and you know, working through their program. And so any comments anybody has? Or Thank you for coming. Any comments or questions for Janice this morning? I believe this is a public hearing. Go ahead, Commissioner. Just, just a comment on the importance of, of this grant in um, educating people in 
driving safely on the um, semi trucks across the road just because our nation runs by semis and if we didn't weren't transporting coast to coast we would shut down a lot of places in a big hurry and I just think it's there's always a shortage of truck drivers and I um, I just think it's great that we found this grant that we could use to educate more. One of the, the things drive. that they found was that, that the average age of the truck drivers was something like late 50s, and this is something that if you look at who is applying for these, a lot of them are people who, is, who um, English is not their native language, a lot of them are immigrants, and it's a good fit, it's um, a decent job with a good income, and it's something that they're more than willing to do, so it's been very successful. I mean, we. I think they only started taking applicants through this program in, in September and three-fourths of the scholarships are going now. Any other questions? I'll be right with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Thank you for your comments and thank you for your work and, uh, and certainly our partnership with you has been very uh, progressive and productive because I know the CNA things yeah, that you've that worked on and now with the now. truck driving uh, applications and school. And the good thing about the truck driving one is it's not just the scholarships but they have another truck now and their concern was they actually, their truck actually that they had before would actually be in North Dakota for training at times so they had a truck but didn't have access to it all the time. So. Thank you. Thank you. We don't need to do anything but uh, have your report, and we do appreciate yeah, that. Appreciate Thank you. Sorry. Item 12 is to authorize the chairman to sign addendum to the contract with the Minnehaha County Deputies Association regarding the establishment of a corporal position. Michelle Boyd. Good morning, Michelle Boyd, Chief Deputy, Minnehaha County Sheriff's, o Sheriff's Office. Um, this morning you just approved the new classification of corporal to the pay grade of 16. So I'm here to um, request you to sign the addendum to the contract, which would establish the corporal position. The deputies, the deputies Association has voted on this, and I have the President, Ryan Qualseth, here. He's signed the addendum. So we're just requesting that um, you sign the addendum as well. We've made the necessary wording changes to move forward. We'd like to start with that immediately. Any questions or comments for uh, Michelle? Move to authorize the chairman to sign the agreement. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments from the audience? I would just like to publicly thank the Deputies Association and the union for being a cooperative partner in this. We do appreciate your support, so thank you. Um, any other comments from the audience? If not, we have a motion and a second to approve the uh, contract with the Deputies Association in regards to the corporal position. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is to authorize the chairman to sign an agreement between Minnehaha County and Ryan Thornell to update Regional Juvenile Detention Center Policy and Procedures Manual. Todd Cheever. Good morning, Commissioners. Todd Cheever from the Juvenile Detention Center. Um, asking that we enter into a contract with uh, Ryan Thornell to help us update our policies and procedures. We've gone through uh, JDI facility inspection and there is a large number of policies that need to be updated and, and completely um, some new policies that need to be added. Um, there's hundreds of areas that we need to hit on. And uh, Ryan is a professor at the University of Sioux Falls. He is also uh, was one of the leads in the facility inspection team and is um, a perfect fit since he knows quite a bit about our facility already. So I'm asking that we enter into that contract, um, which would end at the end of this year. It does have a maximum cap of $25,000. Any questions for Todd? Uh, do we have a Just a comment Heiberger? that um, I'm fully a sport of this as being on the JDC and that um, Todd has been working on this and there's no way that I feel like our staff that we currently have can get these policies and procedures done that have been recommended to go forward with JDAI and these funds are coming from money that we've saved through the program by implementing JDAI and so I believe it's an important next step. Thank you. Any other comments? Any Commissioner Peckis. Well, I just did some <coughs> quick math. He's going to be working 
to get twenty-five thousand dollars at twenty-five bucks an hour, I just did some quick math. That would be twenty-five weeks of forty-hour work week. That's a lot for a professor at USF. Um, I'm figuring that it won't make it to twenty-five thousand dollars, but my guess is that uh, there's enough there for him to be able to spend the time necessary to get it done. Thank you, John. Uh, other comments, questions? Anyone from the audience like to make any comments? If not, we have a motion and a second to approve the. Uh, no, we, need we don't have. No, I'll make a motion. Huh? Second. I guess we don't have a motion, but now we do. <laughs> so we have a motion and a second to approve the contract. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Thank you Todd. Item 14 is consider a resolution to declare taxes on the 2012 county treasurer's list of uncollectible mobile home taxes as uncollectible. Pam Nelson. Um, this is a, once a year we do this and it basically we're re declaring the mobile homes that we have, the ones that are uncollectible. Um, we have about 36 of them this year and the total was around almost 24,000, a little less, 23,869.22. Uh, keep in mind that um, just because we're declaring them uncollectible doesn't mean we're not going to collect the money. It just means that the sheriff doesn't have to go out all the time and serve, serve them. So I'd appreciate your support. Thank you. Any, Any questions? questions for Pam? Uh, Commissioner Barth? I would just comment that uh, over the past four years, uh, we've declared $147,680 uncollectible. And if you just take the 23000 uh, plus that we're doing this year to use the federal way, you know, they, they cut a trillion dollars over 10 years. Well, this would be $240,000 over 10 years, and if not more. And so it's not chicken feed. And if you look at the law, it says that they can't be moved. Uh, and if they are moved, uh, the person that moved it is liable for the, uh, uh, for the cost. And the first incident of moving it without the correct permit is a $250 fine. The second one is a $500 and any additional ones is $1,000. 17 of these have been moved. And without, apparently without the permit and without the taxes being paid, um, there's obviously uh, criminal activity going on. Anyway, I, I don't think it's chicken feed when you add it up year after year of we're not collecting this money. They changed the law to taxes uh, like they do automo uh, real estate instead of like automobiles. And uh, we're, not getting, uh, we're not getting the money that we're owed. Thank you, Jeff. Any other comments from commissioners? If not, I need a motion and a second. I'll make the motion. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second to approve uh, the resolution to declare the taxes uncollectible and the mobile homes. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. I don't know, do you want me to respond to the question about the difference in the numbers? You know, that would be great because uh, okay. there is a significant difference in one year of the last four, and I, Pam did some research, so thank you. Yes. Um, in 2009, there was around 28,010. There was like 24,000, a little more. But anyway, in 11, there was 70,000, which is significantly more than what we were used to. But uh, quite frankly, um, this, thanks to the sheriff's office, Jason gearman has been doing a great job. We've, he's gone out and he's checked to make sure those mobile homes are there. So we have a better handle on how many there are. And he made a real effort to catch us up on that. So that's why the 2011 year seemed so much heavier than the others. Generally speaking, they should be going down as long as we keep up with it. So thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Cindy, for looking that up, getting us that information. So we appreciate the extra support. Okay, the next item, item 15, is to authorize the chairman to sign notice of award of CY 2013, Title II, Alternatives to Detention Subgrant in the amount of $24,999.32 from the South Dakota Department of Corrections for JDAI grant for expanding JDAI services to partner counties. Ken McFarland. Commissioners, on January 22nd, you approved the submission of a grant proposal uh, to the South Dakota Council of Juvenile Services in the amount of $25,000. And that grant was to help expand JDAI services, not only into Lincoln County, but then to also provide the framework to implement JDAI practices and procedures in the first judicial circuit. Um, 
as per our application, we had a $5,000 uh, split for services in Lincoln and 20000 to the First Circuit. And we did receive notification last week that the council had approved the application and why they didn't just say for $25,000, I don't know, but they approved it for $24,999.32. And so what you have before you, uh, I need an authorization for the chairman to sign the notice of the award accepting the grant and to follow the necessary policies and procedures that are associated with that grant. And we'd recommend approval. Thank you, Ken. Any questions for Ken? If not, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other questions, comments from the audience? If not, uh, those in favor of the JDAI grant for expanding services to partner counties, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Item 16 is consider a motion to donate two utility trailers, title number Y90222 and 1086-7309 to the Sioux Empire Fair Association and authorize the chairman to sign title transfer documents. This was deferred from January 29th, Ken McFarland. Commissioners, the auditor's office has been going through an inventory of all the vehicles and trailers and uh, making sure we have all the necessary titles and uh, paperwork associated with each of those uh, items that are in our inventory. Uh, when we went through that process, we discovered that we had two titles that were in the name of Minnehaha County that we could not match up with our inventory, and we ended up discovering that those trailers had at some point been moved out to the Sioux Empire Fair Association, and that's where the trailers are located at. And so what we're asking, and neither of these trailers are on our fixed asset report, so what we're asking, uh, just to keep things in order, is that you um, declare those vehicles, those two trailers as surplus, and then donate them to the Sioux Empire Fair Association, and we'll have the chairman sign off on the titles, transferring title to the two to the two trailers. And from what I understand, they are used quite heavily out at the Fair Association and have been for a number of years. So, Any questions for Ken? My understanding is this needs to be a unanimous vote to declare it surplus. Any questions, comments from the audience? Mr. Chair, I'd make a motion to declare them surplus to donate them to the to the fair and to authorize you to sign that. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Um, we have a motion that's approved, or motion that has a second. And <laughs> any comments or questions from anybody in the audience? If not, uh, those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Item 17 is an update and status report on the 88th <coughs> legislative session on bills that impact Minnehaha County. Robert Wilson. Good morning, Commissioners. Robert Wilson with the Commission Office. Um, as we do each week during the legislative session, we're going to go over a few bills that uh, could impact Minnehaha County and the uh, activity with those bills of the previous week at the, uh, at the legislature. As, as always, I've got a few bills that I'm going to highlight, uh, certainly not the um, full list that uh, we're following and if you have any questions about bills that I don't mention please uh, please ask me and we'll, we'll get those answers to you. I'm going to start with a bill um, about three pages, four pages in on your uh, on your memo, House Bill 1105, an act to revise the maximum security deposit for residential premises. This is one that uh, was actually in uh, hearing yesterday. Uh, our Human Services Office had a, a great concern about this because it could have a, uh, uh, a direct effect on a number of their clients if uh, um, rental deposits uh, had been raised from the current one month uh, equal to one month rent up to uh, two months or higher um, based on perceived risk. That bill was defeated in committee and uh, I know that was one that, again, Human Services was watching very closely as it could have had a, a, a big effect on, on their clientele. Um, moving forward to um, House Bill 1224, a few pages in, an act to allow municipalities, counties, and school districts to post certain information on the internet in addition to or in lieu of certain publication requirements. And this lays out a, a fairly um, precise framework, but it does 
present a possibility that uh, local governments can post their uh, legal notices on the internet uh, if they choose to do so. And, and again, there's a, a number of different requirements that you have to meet if you're going to reach that standard and, and follow the, the law as drafted here. But it, it's a, an interesting look at, at this uh, topic. It comes up, uh, it's come up a few times before, and, and this, this one will have a hearing today uh, in House Local Government. So we'll, uh, we'll be watching that and, and follow up in the next couple of uh, next week. That one was introduced after we briefed you last week. Um, next bill, or next page, uh, next bill, uh, Senate Bill 70, an act to improve public safety. This is one that's had quite a bit of discussion. Obviously, it uh, will have a, a number of impacts. Um, could have a number of impacts on, on Minnehaha County. It was passed by the House um, last week and, and is awaiting the governor's signature. And uh, as a bill that uh, uh, was drafted at the request of the governor, it uh, looks like this one will be uh, uh, signed into law and become, uh, become practice uh, this summer. Uh, next page, Senate Bill 128, an act to provide authority to counties to prohibit and restrict the use of fireworks and to declare an emergency. This was one of the bills that came out of uh, the SDACC convention last fall, one of the platform bills that was up Senate local government and was tabled last week. That, uh, uh, we were listening in on that one, and that hearing lasted all of about five minutes, so that didn't, uh, didn't go very far. Um, next, next page, a uh, couple of the um, uh, number of the open open government related bills that came forward that uh, I think I described them in previous weeks as kind of clean up bills to the um, uh, overall open open records um, reforms that have uh, gone on over the last couple of years this one uh, 167 is an act to require government bodies to keep minutes of executive or closed sessions that was up last week after we briefed you, and that uh, that was defeated. That was deferred to the 41st day. Um, and um, last bill I was going to mention is on your last page there, Senate Bill 210, an act to provide for assessment of agricultural property based on market, uh, repeal the methodology that assesses agricultural land based on its agricultural income value, and to dissolve the implementation and oversight advisory task force. Um, it's uh, um, would, would uh, change the, the methodology for uh, valuing, a, uh, value, valuing ag land, and that uh, is, was originally set to go before Senate State Affairs. It's now been uh, uh, referred over to Senate uh, Ag and Natural Resources, has not been scheduled for a committee hearing yet, but uh, would, if that were to, were to move forward, that would have a fairly significant impact. Um, those are the bills I was going to, uh, had highlighted. I, I believe Commissioner By Barth may have had a, an additional bill you wanted to talk about or, or mention. Mr. Thank you, if Robert. You, if any of you would have a questions of the bills that I had gone over. I just have a quick comment. I'm reading my uh, schedule here, and on the Senate Bill 210, it says that the, uh, the agricultural based property tax issue passed the Senate Agricultural and Natural Resources Bill 8 to 0? That was, uh, it was referred over to that, uh, that committee from, uh, and I didn't update that line okay. on, the, uh, on the memo, but yes, it, it started in, in state affairs and was referred over to um, Senate Ag Natural Resources and is awaiting hearing in that committee. So, so, so has so the not zero was just was just to get her to get to through that committee. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Otherwise, I was going to have some shock therapy. Co Commissioner, I I had the same reaction when I first looked at that. I, I it took me a, about five minutes of staring at the at the page to realize what they did because okay. it, it it looked um, interesting as yeah. as I was first looking at it. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Barth. Mr. Chair, I just uh, I did get a letter from a, uh, a constituent in Minnehaha County, a prominent uh, tiling installer, uh, complaining about Senate Bill 179. And uh, uh, according to his description, it would require an engineer to uh, uh, 
okay each plan which he doesn't feel is, is favorable, but I think uh, the one key is that it raises the limit that we can charge for. Right now it's $100 is all we can charge for a drainage permit. Some of these projects are quite large and require quite a bit of uh, more than $100 worth of, of stuff, and this bill would allow that to happen, and I, uh, uh, it's not that I'm trying to make any money on the deal here, but I think that the, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't mean Minnehaha County would have to charge more. It just would allow a larger charge. And uh, anyway, this uh, tile installer is quite concerned about this. Thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Heiberger? I did um, bring this up to um, Ken McFarland this morning because I also received the same letter, and he said there are some concerns in that bill and that um, the association's body, Will Cox, is looking at it and having conversations with, with people about it at this point. Anything more to add, Robert? That Sorry. would be my only comment that I did talk to, to Bob Wilcox in the last week, and, and he uh, indicated that he thought there, there may be some movement uh, specifically on the provision that de deals with pre professional engineer. And I, I know that uh, Scott Anderson and the Planning and Zoning Office have been looking at this bill and are, are familiar with it, but, but that is a section that is getting continuing to get some, some close attention. Thank you. Any other questions for Robert? Robert, thank you for your input and your update. The next item is Minnehaha County Commissioner Liaison Reports. Any of the commissioners have a liaison report for this morning? Commissioner Kelly? Um, Carrie, Carrie Deaver's down in uh, Lincoln County working on the transition to the, to the HR services down there. But she did send me a... Um, Note where it go. She did send me a note on, on the progress that's going down there. I just thought I'd brief you on it. Um, so far, they've met with all department heads, toured most of the buildings, and met with many of the staff. They've set up office, ordering our supplies, posting tone notices, and working with IT and getting the staff directory ready. Uh, all three professionals that are going to be working, I guess, with Lincoln County have been down there and visited the site. They've developed the FMLA procedures. Training still needs to be done. And started to file audit review, uh, started updating mandated postings, and started reviewing recruitment-related items. Uh, discussions have already begun on potential compensation study for Lincoln County got conducted this year. So they're moving along pretty good. It's, it's uh, been rather time-consuming this last couple months. and. Um, they expected that going in, so uh, progress is good so far, and I think Carrie's happy with the way it's going. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments from other liaison relationships? If not, we'll go to uh, new business. Any new business? I have just one item. Uh, I think, I don't know if everybody got this. Uh, Ken's not here, but uh, we just got a notice from the South Dakota Department of Revenue about what the CPI will be for 2014. And much to my surprise, uh, the 2014 CPI is 2.1%. Uh, that will be something we will have to deal with in the budget process. So that's the first guideline that we have. Uh, kind of like opening a Christmas present and getting a bag of salt sometimes. But. That's the life we live. So any other uh, new business? If not, we'll do any old business. No old business. Uh, I do need a motion to go into executive session for personnel and litigation issues. Motion to go into executive session for litigation and personnel issues. Second. Motion and a second. Those in favor of adjourning and going into personnel, into executive session for personnel and litigation issues, please say aye. 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 Those same sign. Motion unanimously passes. Thank you.